In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how Henry won his fifth MCS belt in Madden 23. And we're going to be taking a look here at his game against Mr. Football and kind of walking you through like how he did it. So uh, Henry's on offense here. We're going to first just break out in this route combination. He goes to four verticals out of tight slots. Um, so what we're going to do here is, like I said, I just want to show you kind of basically one of the things that I did want to quickly start off with in this meta uh, that we're seeing right now is that we're basically coming out in a formation and we're audibling to another formation. That's what a lot of people are doing right now. It's what Henry's doing. It's pretty much what everybody's doing. I think 80% of the play calls in the MCS tournament were actually some, a, a, essentially you come out and you audible into a play. Typically it's also a different formation. So bunch to tight or tight to bunch or trips to bunch, right? Stuff like that. So um, keep that in mind as we kind of play through this and watch through this. And then the other thing that I want to talk about is essentially the meta. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of a significant shift. Madden 23 is probably the most abilities-based Madden ever. I think it's fairly safe to say that. And so Mr. Football's abilities are entirely designed to play a lot of zone coverage. This is going to change the way Henry plays, right? There are certain plays of Madden that are better for man. There are certain plays of Madden that are better for zone. And you're going to see that Henry is going to do really a job of attacking the different hot spots in the zone. And it's going to start with this first play. Four verticals on a tight slot tap back week. And what you're going to notice here is this route combination is what we've got. So essentially, this is four verticals. So what we're going to, what I really like about this play is I like how these flat routes run. They probably run better than standard flats. These wheel routes are going to pull flat zones out. And then they're also going to attack in these soft spots and actually pull thirds back out of the way. Now, the other thing that he does is something that's been popular for years, which is essentially to have a flat a hitch route right here to kind of sit in the soft spot of zone, a crosser that they're going to have to use her over the middle of the field, and then this running back kind of coming in. Essentially, he's doing a lot of attacking in the seams on both sides. This little box right here from about the from the numbers to the hash, this is what's known as the seam area, um, and it can go all the way up and down the field. So this little kind of rectangular section is where you're going to see Henry do a lot of damage. So anyway, let's take a look at the first play here. And you're going to see football sends four. I believe that was in 3-3, three, three, right? So he sends four. So if you look here, you see you've got the hitch right here. Now the running back, if he could turn his feet up field, uh, would be wide open right in here because we've got the zone. And so this is just really, I think this is just perfectly done. Um, now, I think he's going to actually throw this, but this right here is wide open. He might be throwing RB, actually. Yeah, hits RB, hits the back, and, you know, gets a nice gain. Second down, and again here, comes out in bunch, audible to tight. So that's the second time second, second time he's done that. He's going to do that a lot. Let's see if we – I think here he's going to run the ball, trying to just get a new set of downs. And football actually does a good job of shooting the run, or not even shooting the run, just shedding the run. And uh, this is why you never run the ball, like, on fourth and one this year, because the sheds against the run, I think, are actually really good. Uh, what you'll see right here, same kind of thing. So third third straight time, he's come out in bunch and audible to tight. And we're going to go to inside zone. And as you can see, that is bagged up. Now fourth and two. Got to have it. Fourth consecutive time. He's going to this. Now, he has threat detector, one of the best abilities in the game. If you put that on Joe Thomas, your left tackle, it allows you to know when your opponent is blitzing on third and fourth down. And he goes to this route combination that I did want to show you at a mesh spot. So you see here, goes to mesh spot. And what you're going to notice is this is one of my personal favorite route combinations in the game. It's a slant post combo, but this tight end quick out is really good against man coverage, especially if you have short and elite. Taysom Hill gets short and elite for zero AP. So you have a man beater in this route right here. He's going to be utilizing this flat and seam wheel. This has been a great concept, man, for the last several years. Uh, essentially, again, where are we trying to attack? I talked about it previously this little box right here why are we trying to attack there because if he blitzes if he blitzes here and he blitzes here there's nobody in these little boxes to take away the seam so what you're going to see here is we go to that slant post combo right here and look at this this is a hard flat i believe right here from this defender um these guys are <laughs> playing super underneath he actually has a lot open but he is getting screamed at so his tight end is open here, but that could be a flat zone knockout. I'm pretty sure football does have that. This guy is actually traveling, and this is the drift logic of zone this year. If you put somebody on a flat from the middle of the field and they come outside, that is going to play pretty decent. So he's going to be patient here if he waits right here. He actually played this pretty good, uh, but he highballs. 
And this is something that I actually think is kind of interesting. The high ball is really the key to this. So his high ball right here uh, to get the ball over the user is really important. So he high balls, clicks on right here, and he's able to complete it to Plaxico over the middle of the field. A quick aside is that you want players in this year's game to be over six foot two. It's going to significantly help with high balls. Now, this is the, I believe this is the fifth consecutive time that Henry has come out in bunch and audible to tight. Henry is running the Indianapolis Colts playbook. We're going to be releasing a full Indianapolis Colts offensive ebook on our Patreon page. If you want to check that out, that's where you get access to all of my Madden 23 offensive and defensive ebooks. So if you want to check out everything, the, the link's in the description. Now he goes to the play flood out of tight slots here um, with a hot route master quarterback. He has hot route master on Brady. I believe he has gunslinger, fearless, set feet lead, and hot route master on Tom Brady. So what you're going to see here is a bench concept. We're going to take this receiver, put him on a five-yard out. We're going to take this tight end, put him on a corner route. And then over here, we've got our standard flood play. And then we're going to have our running back kind of coming over the middle of the field uh, to help us, you know, kind of have something in that area of the field. Football calls a timeout. But I'm pretty sure Henry's going to go the exact same play. So as you can see here, it's almost scripted. Henry has almost scripted this out to a degree um, where you see just the consistency. Now, football goes offside, so it's a free play for Henry. But I want you to watch what happens. The drift logic in Madden 23, guys, is super interesting in terms of how it plays out his own. So football has got these flat zones on the outside here. And what you're going to see is this flat zone is this guy right here. Even if he's in a 10-yard cloud, because of the way this drift logic works, the flat zones will suck to this out route. So right there at this point, there's this little soft spot where you can throw this at the high point, And he's going to do just that, catch the ball, and get up field for about 16 yards. Henry could almost be, I mean, he's basically running a flawless offense on this drive. Um, right here, this is kind of interesting. So every now and then he'll flip his bunch. I'm not exactly sure the rhyme or reason. Obviously, you could make an argument that it does say the hash marks, like he's running the bunch to the wide side. But you'll see throughout this game, it's not going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. It's kind of, I think, depending on what the play is that he wants to run from tight, he's going to want to be on a certain hash. Now, right here, he's going to go to mesh spot. He has this post route right here. Uh, over the middle of the field, he's got this fade. Um, this fade is, is interesting. So in tight slots, if you put this outside receiver on a fade, it can sometimes help pull the outside third zones, even if it is to the wide side of the field. He put his tight end on a corner out, and then he's got this drag. So what we have here is this is a quick throw. So let's say they blitz me off the edge here. I can quick throw this, and then the user has to go over in this area to take that away. As soon as he takes this step over here, now all of this grass becomes open because the user's out of the way. And then basically it's a matter of does this defender want to take the drag or does this defender want to take the pose? That's kind of what we're looking at here. So what you'll see here, right here, so you see you get pressure. Now what football did that I actually thought was smart is he mans up the running back right there. That's a really good way to take away wheels. But this cloud flat, you should never press cloud flats because they just can't get back far enough. So he's anticipating five-man pressure is going to get home in time. We can also dump this down because even though he manned the wheel route up, his user still is kind of caught in between this drag and this post. So you see Henry does a great job of stepping up in the pocket here and delivers this high ball free form to this fade, uh, which I actually want to show you. So right here... Um, Notice that this guy is drifting to the middle of the field and there's nobody in this island. Henry does a really good job of throwing to where space is. When you're reading your reads, right, you want to look for the open grass. In this example, we have open grass to this left side. With free form, he's going to hold left trigger. I believe he high balls it as well. Um, and he's just going to throw it to the left side of that safety and click on and ag it. So a really good job. Uh, by Henry, and now he's going to go on defense. Now Henry, uh, I think, runs uh, a defense fairly significant than most, uh, fairly different than most of the players in this tournament. He runs predominantly man coverage. Uh, he has man coverage abilities out on his field. He has his safeties both have deep out zone knockout. I'm pretty sure, and so he's going to be in this nickel three three cub. I think he's the only one that was in this defense. Um, this is actually the defense that I recommend as well. Uh, I think this is the best defense in the game because of its versatility. So you're going to notice Henry right here, pretty standard man coverage setup. He did put this corner on the left side in the third, uh, but pretty standard. And we're going to see how he actually plays defense against Mr. Football is probably widely considered one of the best offensive players in the world over the last three or four years. So here we're going to go bench pivot. Now, football, I think, is flipping his bunch a lot. He might He's going to probably be in a bunch more than Henry 
uh, Henry will be. Uh, but notice here, we're, we're, like I said, you're going to get a lot of man coverage. So um, let's see here. So right here, so outside third to take away the C route. He mans up the running back route. He actually drops this guy off. So three-man rush. And then essentially this is wide open and he should take it. Yes, he does. Henry also runs a lot of shaded underneath man. This is a principle I've been talking about all year at a 3-3 cup. And that is the ability to take these two safeties and put them in outside thirds and then have a shaded down man coverage approach. So that was straight man to man with those two outside thirds, as you see. And this is kind of his base coverage shell. I talked about this uh, on the channel several several times here, and uh, we actually teach this in the 3-3 ebook. It's to teach you a, a little bit more in-depth version of how to run it and how to actually use it to adjust formation to formation. Again, notice that Mr. Football is largely staying in bunch here. He's going to go to flood. He loves to smart route this post um, in short yard situations. Going to go to five wide here. And let's see what happens. Okay, so I think right here we're still getting this. It's kind of interesting. Um, I think actually Henry went with quasi match or zone look here. Another thing that Henry did that was a little different this game than he did in the first piece. See right here, Mr. Football saw match. He's immediately going to a match beater. Henry does a really good job of changing his coverage. So Henry's never going to run. I, I believe Henry is one of those players, and I could be wrong about this, but generally speaking, he doesn't run match coverage two plays in a row. He's going to sprinkle it in every now and then, but generally is going to be in main coverage. Because what happens is if people see that you're a match, they're going to immediately try to quick snap a match beater, um, and Henry uh, does a good job of kind of never putting you in a position where that's a great play call. So he's very strategic with his change-ups. Uh, defensively you know he's gonna give you fastball 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 change up fastball 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 change up right so it's kind of interesting here's a sin five out of man coverage gets the pick and gets a great stop so now Henry right now is in a really good spot um, defensively he has uh, been able to get a stop on his first drive able to walk down the field and score again goes bunch to tight he has yet to call a play out a bunch but he's come out a bunch every single play now, I did want to quickly talk about what you just saw Henry call here. This is something that Henry does. It's kind of interesting here is these a little bit different than what I've seen in the past. But basically, he's going to run this short side flood. Now, I've talked about this before on the channel that if you're going to flood zones, it's best this year, especially against cover three, cover four, to flood your zones when you are on the short side of the field. What do I mean by that? When you want to run a right side flood, be on the right hash mark. When you want to run a left side flood, be on the left hash mark. And zones are going to play significantly differently, and it's going to be better for your flooding combinations. But what he does is interesting is he's going to streak his inside player, who is going to be kind of his primary clear-out route, and then he's going to put this corner route over here to Plaxico Burris. This could be for a couple of different reasons. One of the things that football has been doing a lot of is he's been manning up this player onto this guy, and then also kind of leaving this guy uncovered. So this could be some of the reason as to why. Also, I do want to quickly point out that probably I think 50% of his play calls so far, Henry has ran a Y sale type of concept. That is a corner, a fade, and then a backside deep dig route or post route over the middle. So kind of interesting that, you know, the best player in the world is using air raid concepts. Here he throws his corner out, kind of a risky throw, um, and obviously didn't work out too great for him. But that's also why I don't like to necessarily put that outside player on the corner. I'd probably rather have the inside player, but obviously um, their situation. So here we go again. I think this is the seventh or eighth play Henry has ran, and every single time he has gone to this tight slots. Now he's going back to that play he ran the first time. Now why do you ask, why, why might he have gone back to this play? Because Mr. Football just showed cover four. So he just dropped these guys back into the coverage. And what happens in that case is now you're going to, again, we're going to now be able to live and die in this little box area of the field. So one of the things that Henry's doing a really good job of too is he's mixing up where he's attacking on the field. The last play he attacked corner, flat, middle. Now he's going to attack seam, seam, flat, flat. Okay, so really, really good. So you see here, here's a blitz. Now, right immediately what we know is that he has to use her, this guy right here. Now, at this point, you can literally just throw this ball. This guy's wide open right there. Now he's in no man's land. He has to defend this and this. And then these guys are going to be open late, but we don't have enough time. So you see here, Henry. Now, 
He sees that Mr. Football takes this one step over here, which tells him he can high point and cut this off against any zone in the game. And as you see, pretty good job. Football did get a breakup, but that was kind of a good play by both parties, in my opinion. Technically, he did have the running back wide open, but, you know, as you can see. So, again, again, audible into tight slots, right? Coming out a bunch, audible into tight. Very interesting strategy. So now I see something a little bit different. So last time I think we saw that this guy was manned up. This is the same exact play. The only difference is now Henry's going to have a clear out streak here. Um, and the reasoning is because this guy was manned up last time. Now you see a little bit different. This is just straight spinner. We've got to take this running back read. I don't know if he's going to get that off, though. And now we're in a little bit of a pickle here. Fourth and ten. Football's been kind of adjusting well to some of Henry's concepts. Notice that Mr. Football, and again, this is how you get stops is he's, he's got a base coverage shell, base defense, and then in key moments, he's going to mix it up. So now Henry's going to go to bench. Um, right here, we've got this. Okay, so what, what do we have right here? We have a short side flood, right? We have this clear out. We have a corner. Then he takes the back and motions him to the left side. And whenever you have someone motioning out here to the wide side of the field and you're able to get them outside the numbers, now he can clear out zone on that side as well. So we've got two corner routes. And I think he actually changed his adjustments here. I'm not sure why he did that, but he's mainly trying to hit this corner. He actually gets stopped, and now Mr. Football has a good chance to score. I don't love that play call from Henry because I feel like he didn't give himself a great chance if that corner route was taken away. Um, so, anyway, it's what it is. Now, something interesting about when Henry sends pressure out of this 3-3 Cub uh, defense that I wanted to quickly point out. This is something that I think is super, super smart. So I've talked about this before. You want to um, contain the running back side linebacker. So when you hit the, when you run the mic but zero, you contain. And what that does is if they block this running back, this contain is going to loop all the way around the running back and sack the quarterback. What Henry does that makes this blitz a thousand and one times better is he actually goes ahead and manually re-blitzes the backside linebacker. So let's say they block a tight end. You'll notice he'll get insanely fast sheds over here. I think this is a very minor thing, but also something that I think is makes, makes a big difference. Now, another little piece of the way Henry does this blitz that's different than the way most people do is he actually spreads his line, and I think he's crashing his line out to set this blitz up. What this does is it creates significant disengages and overloads on this tackle and on this tackle right here. And you'll notice when he sends pressure, I'll try to show it to you here. So right here, he motions out. Now you'll notice Henry's going to change. Now, as soon as the running back gets motioned out, Henry does something very interesting. He crashes his line down and he manually re-blitzes these linebackers because the blitz is now, now he doesn't need the contain to loop around the running back in case the running back blocks and he knows that the pressure is going to come in. So he's going to crash them down and re-blitz these linebackers. And then he actually kind of randomly zoned that linebacker out. I'm not sure why he did that. Four-man rush. Still does good. And another little micro micro detail of Henry's defense that I do want to quickly point out. This guy right here is who, uh, Julius Peppers. This guy right here is Thomas Davis. These guys are linebackers out of position at safety, right? They're actually safeties in the game. But what's interesting is when you put these guys in, as opposed to, let's say, maybe Ronnie Lott and Steve Atwater, what you get is better sheds when you send five. They're still going to animate in coverage, but it's just kind of a micro detail that I thought I'd point out. I thought Henry just really, um, he does the little things better than everybody else. And I think that's what makes him so good. Uh, so what you'll see right here, same thing. See here, the spread line. Now I want you to watch this um, these four, uh, three down linemen pass rush. And I want to talk about it really quickly uh, whenever we see this. So what you're going to see here, you might send five. Notice he's also, yeah, okay, so you send three. So he sends three here. DeMarcus Ware, I believe this is Warren Sapp, and I want to say this is um, Javon Curse. He has zero AP Ripper here. I'm not sure what he has here. I'm assuming zero AP Speedster. I want to say he has Ripper here, but he could also have, uh, I think he has maybe the double or uh, under pressure ability, but I, I don't know for sure because they didn't show this. But what I want you to watch is this Ripper ability will go crazy um, at certain times throughout the game. So there, Mr. Football runs a little man beater, is able to get it. Notice how much man coverage Henry is running. Um, just notice how much man coverage he is running. So watch here again. Here again, let me see if you show, show us the play. Right here. Yep, shows us the play. This is what I want to show you. I think this is so smart. He actually has the – so, again, I talked a little about, about this a little bit. 
He has these safeties. They have, He has a safety nickelback package on in 3-3. I've talked about this before. It creates these outside thirds for your safeties so that they fan out and they can actually play corner routes and stuff like that. What he does in this situation is interesting. Is He's probably assuming that we're going to get some kind of flat wheel uh, or streak corner. I'm not sure exactly what he's anticipating here. But he has the running back band up. So if the running back runs the wheel... He's got the running back. The other thing is he's going to send five. So when he sends five, remember, this guy's on a contain, and then he re-blitzes the linebacker opposite of the tight end so that if the tight end blocks, um, then you're going to get really, really good sheds uh, versus if not. Okay, I just think the little things are so, so big in terms of his defense. Also, please notice this is something really important. Henry is standing in the eight, uh, over the center, but he's standing just to the right of the center. This is so that he can trigger that blocking mechanic and make the running back have to block the contain, and that's the glitch, and that's what makes that blitz so good. Football motions this guy out. You see here this slot goes. Henry's going to reset his defense a little bit and play just standard man coverage. You'll also notice now nobody's going to be on a contain, and you'll see look how fast the five-man pressure comes off the edge, and then we have basically man coverage here uh, across the board. Still running that zone, but now he kind of cross man that guy, and you see here really good defense by Henry. So again, just can't can't say enough about the little details that uh, Henry Henry does that are so critical. So right here, that's a perfect example. I'm gonna back this up. Watch, watch Julius Peppers right here. So he's gonna stand right here. Okay, remember now for whatever reason he doesn't actually contain him. It actually works out better for Henry. So watch right here. Okay, right. We're getting dealt with pressure right. This guy is going to engage with this tackle and watch the instant shed. See that instant win right there? Even though that tackle has, I believe, edge protector or something to help, maybe secure protector. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, but as you can see there, able to get the pressure and uh, put him in a position, put him in a tough spot. So now third and 10. See if he said, no. So now he's not going to send five. Okay, he's not going to send five. And you're going to see a little bit more of a coverage look here as a cloud for the corner route, trying to funnel everything back in the middle of the field, and really good job by Henry. So he's able to hold Mr. Football to three, which is actually a really big deal in that situation um, because Mr. Football does get ball at half. Uh, and so, it, again, now you've got five minutes. Ideally, this should be the last drive of the second uh, of the first half. And Henry should end the quarter with a field goal or a touchdown. That's the best thing. It's going to continue to make sure he's in control of the game. Here he goes to that bench concept, wide side concept here. Um, hits this over the middle. He actually very interesting. He has the corner route open. He has corner on actually both sides. Um, so, interesting. Again, he audibled from bunch to tight again. Now, this is interesting. Mr. Football is actually running quite a bit of, like, inside quarter, inside quarter, cloud, cloud. I'm not sure why this is a great route combo for something like that. Um, if he was running, like, outside third, inside third, deep half, cloud flat, I think that's better. Now, obviously, it leaves other things open, right? It might leave this little seam area open. It might leave this little seam area open, right? But what you're seeing Henry do here. This is not normally a great route combination if they're playing cover three over here because this guy's going to take the corner, this guy's going to take the seam. But what you've noticed so far is Mr. Football's played a significant amount of cover two. So you see right here. Now, this guy actually turns and runs with this, which means that Football actually went with a standard cover four. But he does have C.D. Lamb right here. I think they even talked about the broadcast. He kind of missed the read. He was expecting cover two on that right side. Didn't get it. And um, that's a valuable valuable piece of like just mixing up your coverage sometimes. So here we go again with that seam concept. Really like this a lot. Now we're going to get some, again, last time we got drop eight zone. This time we got send five man, but we're going to flip the man coverage up a little bit um, and even maybe play some zone over here. We've got to take the running back read right there and good read by Henry. Mr. Football's making a significant amount of adjustments. Uh, anyone that runs dollar at a high level knows that, you know, what you, the key to dollar is the fact that it's really hard for you to identify what they're doing pre-snap. 
And so if you could mix this up, or this is actually baseline 3-3 three, three cub, or 3-3 three, three normal. But also the same, same is true of that as well. And there's that bitch call. That should have been a pick. So, uh, he, he thought it was going to be a pick. Um, right there. Uh, Henry likes this bench concept right here against cover two. He sees this guy kind of go to the out route. So the idea is like he can fit this in this little window, especially with a high point right on the cut. You're going to catch that right in that little area. Um, and kind of just gets kind of fortunate that he didn't throw an interception. Uh, but anyway, here's fourth and two. Good. Notice he – Henry is still yet to call play from bunch, I'm pretty sure. Fourth and two. What did he run last time it was fourth down? Pretty much the exact same play. A little bit different, but pretty much the exact same play. Post, slant, out route. I think last time he actually had a flat and a wheel. This time he's going to leave the skinny post as a deep clear out and then force him to have to defend a flat there. So you see here, right there, running back covered, out route kind of there. Can kind of squeeze that in. The user has to choose, am I going to guard this or am I going to guard this? He bails to this as soon as he sees that. Henry knows this is open because of this guy running a streak to clear the zone. High balls it. Should be high ball on 90% of your throws uh, because you can get that kind of animation in those little soft spots against the zone. All right, first and 10. Ball on a 21. Henry can go up 14 to 3. It'd be huge. Goes back to the corner route thing. He's anticipating cover two. Doesn't call cover two, but he does over here. He doesn't miss it a second time. So this was the read Henry missed last time. He did not hit this when it was wide open because he was looking over here. This time, as soon as he sees this guy bail, he knows it's cover four, comes back over here, sees the grass, and bada bing, bada boom, touchdown Henry, 14 to three. Now, the one thing that you can say about Henry right here is he probably scored, he probably scored just a little bit uh, too fast. Now, again, you take your touchdowns when you can, but he does leave football plenty of time. If football goes down and gets seven here, he can clock Henry out and get the ball out of half. So football goes to trips tight end. Um, I actually really like that. Um, I'm surprised we're not seeing more of that. The Colts playbook actually has a really good trips tight end offset, tight slots, bunch, and then a couple of other ones as well. So kind of interesting. Another thing I did want to point out is that football is running significantly more bunch than Henry is. Okay, Every time football has ran bunch, he has struggled when he's gone to tight slots. Um, he's had pretty decent, uh, pretty decent plays. So just kind of interesting. Part of this maybe just be Henry's uh, reps against Bunch, of course. Uh, but anyway. So another thing that Henry's doing is he actually has Charles Woodson. Let me show you one other thing here while we're going to look at this. This is interesting. Okay, okay, okay. Whoops. Let me let me get this for you guys so that we can actually because he's actually going to show us. So this is a big deal. Um, he puts double or nothing on on Julius Peppers. Why does he do that, right? Because this is he's going to be blitzing him a lot. He does the same thing over here on Demarcus Ware. Uh, he actually has edge threat on, I believe that's Demarcus Ware. He has edge threat on Demarcus Ware. Another very interesting decision. Okay, so he actually went with Ripper double or nothing and edge threat. So here he has a edge threat and double or nothing stack. Very interesting. And then with Sherman, he has a pick artist and deep out zone knockout, kind of expected. Notice that Woodson, same ability, pick artist, doubles on nothing. On his user, he has tip drill. His defense tackle is John Randall. I actually thought it would have been Warren Sapp, but he is running John Randall with goal and stuff. And then I was right about Javon Curse over here has speedster and Calvin Johnson right here, pick artist, deep out zone knockout. And then let me see what uh, Thomas Davis does have. Let's see if we can catch that for you guys. Uh, da, 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 their speedster. Thomas Davis has double or nothing. So, again, these guys are pass rushing abilities, um, and so he's going to blitz them a lot. Okay? So, interesting ability set up here. I don't think he had – the previous uh, – the setups, the abilities that they're actually explaining down here at the bottom, they are significantly more man coverage, like inside shade KOs, right? So kind of interesting. Um, kind of interesting. Seems like Henry must have uh, swapped his abilities uh, mid-game. I think it has to do with, you know, the abilities football is rocking. I can't exactly tell you. I don't know what they all are. I would I don't see edge protectors, so that might be why. I don't know what – they might be secure protectors. I'm not sure. But kind of interesting that Henry's rocking a lot of double or nothings. And you will notice in this gameplay – 
um, that he does get a lot of sheds. He's also not rock. What's also interesting is he's not rocking. Um, he's like Antonio Cromartie, deep route KO, medium route KO. We did not see that on there. Now he does have Cromartie on the field, um, you know, but it didn't didn't say if that was what he was doing there. So kind of interesting. So two minutes left. Football kind of um, really hasn't shown much this drive. <laughs> um, kind of running bunch trail here, Ronnie Lott. I would assume he has inside shade on Ronnie Lott. He'd have to. There's another sack. And this is, again, this is what I'm talking about. Watch this right here. What's Whatever 56 has, I'm pretty sure that's not edge protector because look at that. That's an instant win from a edge threat looping around and getting incredible pressure. Boom. Great, great defense uh, from Henry. So it could have been an ability match scenario. Not exactly sure, but just kind of fascinating that, you know, I'm just surprised that that, that, that right there just happened. Um, it was one of the big things that kind of sparked my interest about Henry was, in this specific scheme, why are, why is he getting so many instant wins, right? Uh, here, ah, that's in he see his face. I mean, that's got to be fourth down, you know. That's got to be a KO. That's a deep out zone knockout. We're sitting right there. What Henry did a lot of is a coverage I've actually talked a lot about, Again, is a five-man coverage with two zones, and those zones can be these outside thirds here, or those zones can be outside thirds over here. Maybe a cloud flat to the to the other to the short side. So, kind of interesting. Here's that five-man pressure again, and gets agged. Hopefully, after the latest patch, that is not going to happen to him anymore. But kind of, um, yeah, kind of interesting. All right, so. 35 seconds left. Football needs to score here. He really needs seven. And again, clock management. Runs the ball. Good call. He's trying to make sure that Henry Cesus does not even get the ball back. Uh, if he can help it, that's his goal. His primary goal here is to score a touchdown, but his secondary goal is to score a touchdown with zero seconds on the clock and then get the ball to half and go down and score a touchdown and, and literally flip the game and be up 17-14 to 14 by the next time Henry sees the ball. That is the primary goal. doesn't always work out that way. you see here kind of audibly around. Henry's got to know that a run is coming and be shocked if there's not a run. Football actually audibles too many times. I'm not sure if he did. I don't know. Sometimes people actually do that on purpose. I'm not sure if he was if he was actually doing that on purpose here. Um, this touchdown has just got to make Henry sick, right? One-on-one -on -one coverage. Henry's trying to click on and make a swat. I think he was shading underneath and then just gets mossed. And you see the facial expression, frustration. And honestly, has played pr pretty much perfect. And, you know, football's able to catch an ag on him. So, um, you know, the power of Madden 23 ags. And then here, Henry gets a little jiggy, but not much to it. And then I believe he's just going to – He's just going to take this to half. So that is uh, the first half. Let's get into the second half. So second half here, football goes to tight slots. Now, remember, I was saying pretty much, I mean, if you take away the ag, right, he really hasn't had much out of bunch. Um, Henry's kind of bagged bunch. So it'll be interesting to see. I think he's going to go to more trips tight end. It's interesting. Trips tight end, every single time he's gone to trips tight end, it's been a slant or a post to the tight end. Something else underneath. This could be a couple different things I really like. You'll see right here, this should be a C route right here. Double C routes, I love that. Uh, again, trying to attack man coverage. And then has a slant post concept over the middle of the field. Again, Henry pretty much in man with those two outside thirds. As you see, outside third, outside third. And then this guy's kind of drifting in a little three wreck. Pretty decent little play there from uh, football. And first and ten. So let's see if he goes back to trips. Probably, nope, now we're going to go to tight slots. His inside zone. Um, it's not, you know, we're going to call inside zone here and see what happens. So we're going inside zone, bada bing, bada boom. And he gets, uh, what, eight yards right there. Keith Byers, halfback of choice because you get free goal line back and because he's tall. Height is such a big deal in this Madden. And so you see people are getting players that have height. Interesting call right here. Um, kind of, I think, I'm not sure why football's calling this concept. Um, I think just because this guy's been on a post, now he's going to be on a corner. Man, man, boom. And, and and again, you know, because Henry doesn't have any man abilities, his man coverage is not as good as it was 
uh, previously in the tournament. I'm trying to think of his first game. Well, I know that uh, – I can't remember who his first game was against. Oh, Astro. When you, if you go watch the game against Astro, it was pretty much man coverage every single time. Uh, this one, a little bit more mixing in the zone. I think they might have been abilities for Cole, and he, I'm not sure if he can change those or not from game to game. But kind of interesting. The ability meta is certainly a big deal this year. Again, slant post, C route. It's interesting that he's running a, a C route right here because they're kind of running into each other. Um, it should have been a fumble. Again, Henry's face tells it all. That was the whole story. Mr. Football has struggled his way down the field every single time. I mean, it really has, in my opinion, it's been kind of like, you know, tough tough sledding for him offensively. Um, that was shaded down. Pretty sure that was shaded down man again. Henry's running a lot of shaded down man uh, and then using those outside thirds. That's kind of his main game plan is to use shaded down man. Also noticing, again, his Sin 5 versus Sin 3 situations. Here, football's going to go to bunch, see what happens. Oh, um, so, okay, so Henry's running a lot of shaded down man. The one thing that can get shaded down man trouble is in bunch, you can streak your tight end. If there's no, if he bumps, watch this guy off the wall, off the ball. Right there. See that bump? See how he bumped him? That's literally it, and he just he'll just burn him. It's crazy to me that that happens as consistently as it does, but it is a very consistent thing. If you're facing someone that's running a lot of shaded down man, Doing something like that will help you. Um, will help you actually, you know, get some separation against shade underneath man. Henry Audibly from bunch to tight for the like 500th time. Same exact first play as he had last time. Wheels, little running back streak. Boom, easy attacking the scene. Now he doesn't. What's interesting about Henry is even on offense, he may attack the same area of the field, but rarely does he run the same play twice. He does have a very small collection of plays. We're we'll probably talking about maybe seven to ten unique plays that we've seen Henry run in this game. But he, the way he packages them together um, and the, is interesting. So, like right here, he just attacked seams. Now he's going to attack the sidelines. So you see here, running backs open, tight ends open, the users in this area, and then this is why I love Y Sale um, because it clears up all of that space for that post right over the middle, and Henry's off and moving. Uh, Henry has looked pretty solid on offense for the most part. Um, now, looks like he's going to stay in bunch for the first time this game, and he is going to run P.A. Reed. So P.A. Reed has this really good crossing route to City Lamb that can beat man coverage. Whenever you are with your bunch to the wide side of the field, if you motion this receiver over and this guy's on a C route, the C route's obviously really good against man, but the C route is also good against zone if you put a streak there and if you are on the short side of the field. So what we have is essentially a corner, a streak, a flat, and a man-beating crossing route over the middle of the field. Very similar to the play we literally just ran, attacking the same part of the field, just using different formations and a different uh, and a different player. Very interesting that he waited all the way to the second half to mix things up and actually start using some of his bunch stuff. So I think that's very interesting. Uh, let's keep clicking through here and see. We're right back in the tight. He should be attacking. This is that bench setup. Now we're going to the bench setup right here. Corner out on the left side. Corner out on the right side. Really nice. And now we've got him in a pretty good spot. So now first and 10. Ball on the 14. Henry going a bunch. And let's see, this is his vertical setup, his favorite setup from last year, where he's got the seam here, seam here, wheel around the left if it's cover two. He's probably looking for that tight end right there. That's a touchdown. And not going to throw it, and going to throw it away. So he's ran two plays out of bunch. Now he's back in the tight. Guess what he's running? Sail. So he's running streak, corner, flat, drag. He's actually going to do two seams. Looking to hit that seam right there. And just, just missed the seam up this up there. Really nice little play. He, you notice in the red zone, he's going to attack seams a lot. Uh, a lot, a lot. So two seams, two corners. Tries to hit that seam there. Misses it. And he's going to have to settle for three, unfortunately. I feel like that wasn't his best package of plays. Really, football has not has struggled to defend some of his base stuff. And I feel like he started going to more of his like situational constraint theory plays. And it just didn't work out for him. Football going to gun tight slots. Trying to run flood, basically that sale concept from football now, except now what we're doing, there you see there again, inside guy on the streak, outside guy on the out. 
and then motion the back out. So now we have the corner over here, corner over here, and somebody over the middle. And good read by football over the middle. So this is actually a really big drive uh, for football here. If he can go down and get seven, it puts him in the driver's seat of this game. If he can only get three, it's going to be interesting. Uh, so you've got gun-tight slots uh, going to flood here, motion that out. And you're starting to see him go to some of his big-time stuff, right, his, two, his big play corners. I feel like he kind of got a little aggressive there. Notice Henry's simple send five pressure. If football's going to continue to send five out, Henry's going to continue to send five. So he's going to force him to have to block. Now notice that when Mr. Football wants to block, he almost always goes to trips tight end so that he can run slant post or crosser post. So kind of an interest or a crosser slant combos over the middle of the field. So kind of just interesting decision making. Uh, let's see here. He should be going to trips tight end. He's gone to trips tight end every single time in key situations like this so from what I've seen. We're going to go post to the tight end. We're going to go slant, probably double C routes on the outside. Got a C route on the left. He's going to wheel the back out of the backfield because he's blocked him every single time that he's been in trips. So his idea is like he's going to send five. And I'm going to try to send that guy on a route right in that little pocket. He actually has him, but unfortunately not able to, you know, and then this is a huge deal. Henry picks it off four minutes and instantly. You can literally see him thinking in his head, I just won the game. That's literally what he's thinking in his head. I'm, Mr. Football will not touch the ball again. He will not touch the ball again. That is Henry's entire strategy. You're going to start to see West Coasty style. Goes back to that seam play, hitch, crosser, streak. That's kind of – that's been the most ran play I think that he's had. That and then the sale concept. So that little stick concept – and then the sale concept's really been the two main things that we have seen Henry do consistently. Going back to tight. So, again, he's ran a bunch twice all game. Going to the sale concept, streak, corner, flat, someone in the middle of the field. I mean, literally, it's been about 10 plays, right? About 10 plays that he has ran. And he has – this is at the top of the top level. He is running these 10 plays to complete perfection. And I think he's yet to run the same play back-to-back. -back. I think he's yet to run the same play back-to-back. -back. Him running the ball right there, 100% clock management. 100% clock management, trying to run some clock and put himself in a good position. This should be a run here on second and inches. He should definitely not pass here because he can work the clock game a little bit more. So should – I'm surprised he actually did not snap that at one second. Uh, I actually think it's so obvious here he only needs about 15 yards to win. This should be a run play every single time, and it should be down to zero. I'm surprised he's snapping this at eight seconds. There might be a reason. I'm not sure what it is, though. Um, so this is the so this is interesting. So if you were gonna pass the ball, um, actually no, you definitely want to run this. So now you audible some tight slot, tight slots inside zone. It's all about can Mr. Football stop his inside zone game right at this point? Uh, Mr. Football is gonna take some time out, timeouts here. Should be a run play on uh, the second down and six. Now, I know he does pass uh, because he believes that if he gets that first down, he's going to get the get, he's going to win the game. There he comes out to a pass and quickly audibles to a run. Now getting it down inside the two-minute warning. Football has two timeouts. This is the ball game, third and one, which is why you're going to see Henry pass. He knows if he gets a first down, the game is all but over. So he's got a flat wheel concept, and we're going back to that post slant or post out route slant flat wheel that's the concept he's ran every single time in these key situations he's going to go to it again again this time it's going to be boom i mean this is literally slant post slant he actually did put him on a slant he scrambles right up here with his quarterback kind of an, a really risky decision um right here if he if i almost think maybe he should have streaked the running back um this is great defense from Mr. Football. He's clearly sitting on this stuff underneath. And this is the right decision. But, man, ugh, I, it, right in here you see. But, again, obviously this is all happening in real time. But, yeah, you kind of got to scramble right up in this little pocket right here get your first down. But that is risky. Uh, and he actually runs in this guy. He's got to get down right here. That's such a key piece. Able to get down. And you see Mr. Football's face, nose, kind of he's in trouble. Uh, first and ten. You're going to go inside zone again, work the clock. Now, at this point, let's see, football calls timeout. We've got minute 50, 30-second runoff, second down and seven. This is a very interesting decision from Henry. He is going to pass here, 
because his thought process is if I run inside zone and it's third and three, I'm going to have to pass anyway to get the first down. His thought is if I pick up the first down, I win the game. I want to give myself a couple shots to do just that. So I want second down to do it. I want third down to do it and maybe even fourth down. So what he does goes to once again uh, that – let me show you actually the play here. This is an interesting call. Um, he's – because Mr. Football is in 3-3 three, three wide, he, he starts going to 3-3 three, three cover to stop the run. Henry knows blocking the tight end really helps pick us up. He runs this. I'm not sure why the running back on the angle route, though. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, it, but, again, it's slant post. It's it's literally slant post for the bread. Everything, all the actions going over here. He's got the post right there. And that is how Henry won his fifth belt. Thanks for watching the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this kind of breakdown. If you did, let me know, and I'll do some more breakdowns for you guys, and maybe even more in-depth than this one. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you guys in the next one.